Thomas Riley. Yeah. Penthouse Studio. Mm hmm. Six Badata Avenue. Home of the great Butcher Bantan and the whole Penthouse vibes. It's uh, the, the energy inside here is so, you know, alive. So how does it feel to be in a space like this with such a rich history? You have artists like Buju Bantan and all the greats nice. that have yeah. passed through, you know, the, the rooms here. Yeah, all right. Well, I never had and thought that Buju Bantan is definitely a main inspiration for my music and even as a youth growing up, look up to Buju Bantan. So coming here as a youth before doing music, just to see Buju, was a thing where, you know, I have to big up my father for that because I had those kind of experiences. So to come here now, as a, you know, young man and there, and I say, yo, I'm here where Buju used to be. Yeah. You know, I rehearsed here with Buju also mm -hmm. to do a Mother's Day concert. Inside the studio? In the same rehearsal room. Wow. So how does it feel? I don't know if I have a word to tell you how it feels, but, you know, we can't say it feel nice. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, these are the things that we didn't want to do when we did younger. Well, talking about feeling, what year are we in with your music? I don't know, because I probably I've been doing music before I can remember. Your first recorded song but was? My first recorded song was for, I think, Willie Lindo. Mm -hmm. Him did have an album called Push For Your Goal. And Willie Lindo's son is Kashif Lindo, mm -hmm. great singer. So just I got on that album just because I was a youth. So they wanted a youthful voice. And it was like, stay in school and don't be a fool or some kind of thing like that. You know? So that was cool. But my father did have a label named Love and Promotion. Off of his song, Love and Devotion. So that is really where I started to like record. You know? As a DJ at them time, they were called DJ. So I used to sing. And that was the, age? I was what, 14? Mm -hmm. Or 14. Them times they know it, they just like it. Until about two years later, I start kind of get a little more understanding of how to make a song and write lyrics. And can I say dance and music now? Dance and music is a thing that just hypnotize me and just hug me up, you know. Because even though I, I, I talk about my father, I used to follow him to things like Heineken Star Time and be in the studio with Dennis Brown and Gregory Isaac and you name them, him man, you know. But I never like it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't relate to it. Because my friend and my beat pandas cannot DJ lyrics and thing. So that was more my kind of thing. We could relate to and love it. So that's dance hall. Yeah, yeah that is yeah, that and at that time it wasn't called dance hall yet. Yeah, because it's it DJ music. Right. Yeah, dance hall is a place where we listen to reggae music. Nowadays everybody calls things names, so you have mm -hmm. dance hall music. But Jamaica people... It was a space of... we reggae play, and, yeah. and Jamaica people know that. There's no such thing as, you know, you have singers and you have DJs. Because you have singers who do dancehall also, mm -hmm. where them call dancehall. So dancehall was a platform where reggae music was a play. So you, would you title yourself or label yourself uh, as any one genre's artist? So you're not a reggae artist or you're not a dancehall artist. Or you're, what kind of artist are you? That's the question. I'm a creative artist. Yeah. And uh, maybe one time I would have say I was a particular kind of artist, mm -hmm. but not anymore. And the reason why is because I can do more than one thing, and I'm gaining more confidence in doing that. One time I used to be shy to express myself in different ways because of people's expectation. You know, even my father being a singer, you know, people think that you have to sing a certain kind of way. And that was one of the things why I never liked singing. Mm -hmm. You know, but me the like DJ thing, because every DJ did have their own style. You have Baby Way and them have their own style. Cableton have their own style. And it was, that was the thing. But singers had to be this way and mm -hmm. you never like it. So, you know, but learning and experience, no, it would be unfair to everything we may do for call myself one thing. Mm -hmm. Prefer, he's a creative artist. And that encapsulates about. all the genres. Yeah, so it, if you're, yeah, man. you want to mix on... Yeah, man, I'm an artist, but not even music. When I'm in the kitchen, I'm an artist. I'm a, I'm a creative person who makes music freely. Yeah. And, you know, and my first love is reggae and dancehall. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if that's still kind of being biased, oh well. But I mean, that, I'm not born to that none at all. How do you market that? How you, how do you... Well, I'm not into my... You have to have marketing people to that. I just go market, go buy my things. I don't mean, know about marketing, I swear. But what I'm learning is that the good thing is that the world 
is breaking away from all of these stereotypes. Mm -hmm. So now you hear reggae songs with rock influence and rock songs with hip hop influence. So the world is becoming a smaller place. Yeah. So everybody mix up now. Yeah. So me drop right. Everybody can relate. You can have a reggae and dancehall is no longer about the rhythm. It's about what you do. So so if there's a hip hop rhythm, then boof, cap, the boof, boof, cap. I mean, got Taurus Riley. It's what I do. That's like the reggae now, because mm -hmm. I'm going to give you that vibe and make you. Mm -hmm. It's not about the music, so to speak. It's about the expression. Make, you understand me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when you hear, if you hear your favorite Jay Z or any one of the rapper them, you hear them on Taxi. Mm-hmm. Do do, do 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 do, and they must say, Yo, man, I give a bag of lyrics. That's what reggae, hip hop. What's that? Mm-hmm. It's an artist mm -hmm. being creative. We make music, so I'm an artist who can be creative. So mm. take us back, rewind, mm. age 14. You're yeah. about to record your first song. What's the sound that you go for? I don't know nothing about that. I didn't go for I was just following directions. I of whom? Of whom? Willie Lindo and um, my father. And everybody, else. I can't remember, everybody was there. I never, I just glad for you you know. So you didn't want to sound in particular, you no, were influenced so like, by a certain No, no influence. Or... I'm influenced by them, because oh. as children of this, and me don't know how me reach around ya. What them want me to do it, I'm ready. So if them say, hey, me say, hey, me just follow directions. And that's how me learn. What was that like? It's being a little you listening to big people tell you what they do. Mm -hmm. What was that like musically though? And I, I couldn't identify what it was at that time. Because once again, I was just glad for the opportunity to be in the studio and being around the microphone. Cause you know, we always want to go around the microphone. Mm -hmm. So when them say go around there, if them they tell me if they say A, B, C, me that say them. They say two, one, two, 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 one, two, three, anything them want me to say. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A lot of artists say that they are influenced by, you know, different artists. You I know. Am. Yeah, you are? Like mm -hmm. who? I'm influenced by all the artists, you know? Uh, and I'm influenced by other things besides music. So, you know, I always speak highly of Marcus Garvey. You know, definitely highly Selassie. I. I'm influenced by my mother, my grandmother. I'm influenced by people that I meet every day. I'm influenced by women. I love talking to women and having good conversations with women. Mm -hmm. I think them honest sometimes more than men. But musically, I speak a lot about dancer because you have a lot of unsung heroes in the dancer, like Baby Wayne. You don't hear about Baby Wayne a lot, mm -hmm. but it's great. You have, and there's a lot of them. So dancehall music, 90s dancehall music is what inspired, inspired me the most. So as you mentioned, your mommy and your grandmother, yeah. and we also think of what that household, you know, would have been like. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Bring us into your house. What was well, that? Well, all about? right. Um, well, my grandmother is a different woman. Grandmother, my mother, mother passed away now. So. Listen, peace. She's a nice lady, but you know, traditional Jamaican Christian church woman. Hmm. So you know, so she knew not nut with Rasta business. <laughs> so like, yeah, oh, you, how did you a, depart from the faith? What was that? In a nut with what Rasta was that business. conversation? <laughs> no, we don't talk. She don't talk to me. She just look yeah. and say, hmm. Is she proud of what you've accomplished yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I go and tell you the story now. So, you know, she love it. She love what me do with music and she loves my song and of course she's royal. She walk and says, my grandson sing, she's mm -hmm. royal, you know. She did love it, you know, as my sister pass. But she know not on a Rasta thing. Mm -hmm. So, Haggy, I joke with her. One at a time, she, you know, Omar, this Rasta thing. Omar, you beard and ray, ray, ray. So I say, Mama, it's all right. I soon get all of my beard drop off and relax and everything and I meet the same one. She said, ha, 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 And she laughed. But she just, you know, she loved me. And she come from a different time. You know, it's a big woman, it's a mm -hmm. old woman, so she know enough about Jamaica history. Was mommy and accepting as well? My mother are different, but listen to this. Remember, say, the, the old generation, them know about some of the persecution where Rasta got through, you know. So I don't think she didn't want her grandson to kind of go through that. Mm -hmm. So that's a part of it also. A lot of times people don't like things. It's not like them don't like it, you know. Maybe them don't want, you know, something happen to you. Or them don't want you to go through things yeah. where them know. You know, so she, as me and her together, she love it. Rasta business, she know nothing with it. Mm -hmm. But she have to love me because I'm her grandson.
Yeah. So it, she is unconditional. And are you conscious of that when you go into her space to say, boy, this is just Omar, this is not Taurus? Well, I mean, well, Omar and Taurus close, you know. And she don't mind as long as it's not a Rasta man. Mm. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, but, but after a while, you know, I miss a rest in peace. She just allow me. And one thing we always have, which is manners and courtesy and discipline. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she knows that uh, whatever I might do, I still my little grandson, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, yeah, so, you know, enough respect to my grandmother, Miss Ruth Tatum from St. Elizabeth, you know what I mean? Great woman, very nice woman. Your mommy, you've yeah. spoken about her, you speak highly oh, of her. Yeah, I'm a friend, man. You I'm defend ready. her? hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, my mother, they give me the name Taurus, you know. April 26th, the sign, if you're into Zodiac business, my rule under Taurus. Mm -hmm. So she said, why don't you use that? But she had tell me that way, but she didn't know what to say. Yeah, they like with sound. <laughs> and then from them time, they would know, say, you have a gun named Taurus. Mm -hmm. I want I me mean, to be DJ. Yeah. What am I find my name? Say, it's a bad name. Me, what? Ready, me ready like everybody else. What power man? Taurus. Mm -hmm. I'm run with it. She support the music. She mm -hmm. always, I want to tell her, it's on cliche. My mother's probably my number one fan. Mm. And she'll, you'll see her at the concert, I jump up and down. Mm. And yeah, me and my mother close. Big time. And even before I was singing, I mean, I do my little DJ thing. She said, you, you yeah, waste your voice. You can't sing. I said, me, not DJ, I can't sing. She said, joke, you know your song, you have your song. So, you know? Yeah, she's yeah. been a supporter. Yeah, just like, we don't hear about she because she's a nurse. So I always tell people, say, look here, my mother's a nurse, and my father's a singer. Boom, they get me, they get healing music. Ah, she heal people. I love that. Let me get the music. Yeah. Here I come with the two of them combined, healing music. And as you mentioned, your father, yeah, the great Jimmy rest Riley, rest in peace. Yeah. In peace. Mm -hmm. He, of course, would have been a great influence on yeah. your music, on your career. And me as a person. And as a person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in thinking about, you know, the, the big moments that you've shared and how he's impacted your life. Um, yeah. Tell us about some of that, the impactful times. Well, first of all, it's my father. Mm -hmm. And... I think, I'm, I'm almost sure, I can't speak for everybody, but every youth son wants to be like them father. Like them look up to them father, them father is just a man. My father is just the coolest man to me. And I want to walk like him, I want to talk like him, I just want to be like him. Him is just a man, you know what I mean? I don't know if everybody feel that way, but almost sure every youth kind of look up to them father like that. Because you're learning how to be a man, you're learning how to be everything, you know, you watch your father. You, you understand me? So, that is the first impact. And then I tell you the truth, musically, I never want to sing. But I still like music and then bring me around music. And then, you know, I never want to be like him in music. Because I couldn't relate to his music. But I still never want him to leave me when he was in the studio. Because mm -hmm. that was like our time. So, it's weird. It's weird, Fi. Oh, hey, I want to uh, vex my father on the day I know. Because some of the things them where I'm doing with music, I know he'd love it. Mm -hmm. Because in you know, the last part before him leave, he was hearing some of the things I was doing. And him say, yo, you? You're not start singing it, you know? You get wicked, you know? Just the conversations that me and him have outside of just, you know, as bridging. My father's my bridging. Me and him fight and cuss like bridging. And him call me and say, what, you have me up? And I link up again. If one man call me every day, it's him. And if one day pass and him don't call me, I'm on it. You dash me away. Yeah. <laughs> my father's my bridging, bona fide bridging. You know, so the influence it's far beyond music. Music just come with it too because him do music. You know, but I, I inspire him with music too, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And him tell me, just like how I approach it. And him say, you know, easy how you think of that. And you know, me and him, a virgin. Yeah.